actually the um, the the 5711 was what we call an omnibus bill and it was multiple bills that w that the Republicans put together we didn't have anything to do with putting them all together we don't have any power actually we have we learned we have some uh, one one fact I want you to remember in your brain so that you don't get too depressed and that is that 70% of the public believe that Roe versus Wade should remain the law and that women should decide. We need to trust women to decide. 70%. The public is with us. So, anyway, that's a place to start. Um, what happened with 5711? Uh, I'm a, a chair of the um, Women's Caucus, the Progressive <coughs> Women's Caucus in the legislature. And um, we just formed, we just actually set up our pack in April and we, and four of the five newly elected um, female pro-choice uh, representatives, we supported with thousands of dollars. And we just formed in April, so we felt pretty good about that. <laughs> and we now have more pro-choice uh, representatives than we did last year. We, have, we now have 51 members, Democratic members, and the number of pro-choice members within that has grown by three or four, I think. So that's also a good sign. And one actually flipped um, from being supported by Right to Life but to voting with us. Okay, so um, the key uh, win that, well, let me just back up just a little bit. Um, I was driving, I think, well, somewhere in Michigan and as I was driving I was thinking we've got to do something we can't just sit here you know and and the 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 5711 had already passed the house it had already passed the um, uh, health policy committee uh, in the Senate and um, uh, the the Senate had to pass it and then it had to be so I thought okay he's probably the governor's probably only listening to right to life on this issue they've got to hear from both sides so I called up the governor's office and in my car, <laughs> but with sink, uh, so it's a little safer, and asked for a meeting with the Women's Caucus. Now, fortunately, we had a group that we could, you know, say we wanted to meet. The Women's Caucus wanted to meet, not just one legislator. So I think that, that played a role. Um, anyway, they said, yes, uh, we will set up a meeting first with staff, and then you'll get to meet with the governor. So we met with staff, and before going in, kind of on the fly, we learned that um, the governor did not want to sign 5711 as it originally was. It was, it was it's the most extreme legislation in the country on abortion, um, or it was. Uh, but he wanted to sign something. So we said, okay, we're going in, we're, we went in with Planned Parenthood and ACLU and three members of our caucus. And, um, we started, we said, you know, you want things to be safer for women, don't you? Because they were sort of selling it on, you know, it's safety, safer for women. And they said, yes, we want it safer for women. So we said, well, closing all the abortion clinics in the state is not going to make it safer for women. Anybody that's lived before uh, 1973 knows that. Um, and they, re they recognize that. So we said, well, the requirements that you're, or the licensing requirements, it's gonna put all but one out of business. Planned Parenthood knew that, because they you know, had contacts with all these, organiza all these organizations. Licensing a, an abortion clinic or requiring that it have a standalone, um, uh, be a standalone surgical center is way beyond what is needed for that procedure, way beyond. Uh, it also raises the cost, <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, so we presented uh, uh, regulations that Maryland, the state of Maryland had already codified. It was already approved by Planned Parenthood, ACLU, and Right to Life. And they said, oh yeah, give us, you know. So we, copies went around. Well, they didn't end up, Right to Life got in there and said, no, no, no. Um, but we're able to get the waiver that, that, that you talked about. Um, and originally, you may not know this, but originally the waiver only applied to clinics that were in place before 10 years ago. And we said, this can't work, you know? We were really upset. She said, okay, okay, I'll change it. And she changed it to December 31st, 2012, which was, you know, so that was a major thing. 
Another change that we uh, uh, made was uh, we added the word incineration to treatment of fetal remains. Incineration basically is what is done now with all medical waste. So it meant that nothing changed, but they didn't know that. <laughs> so they, that uh, word got in there and it, it made it more reasonable. Um, and then there was the issue of malpractice insurance. The original bill called for a million dollars of malpractice insurance not available in the state of Michigan. Not only that, but the statutory limitation was for 250,000. So it's ridiculous to have even, you know, have that much. So they, there was a lawyer in the room on the, on the governor, one of the governor's lawyers, and he said, she said, yeah, that's right. And so they dropped it. It was taken all, it was taken out. That would have sent many OB-GYNs out of the state. We already have a severe shortage, anything above like, is it, uh, Cadillac, there, you know, there really is not any access uh, in the north part of our uh, state. Um, and then um, there was uh, <laughs> the whole, you had mentioned about the course of abortion, there being no criminal uh, uh, penalties. penalties. Well, they, uh, there was a tie bar that was put in over in the Senate. We got all upset about it when we heard about it because it, it added criminal charges for failing to follow the procedures for uh, coercive abortions. We got all upset about it. It was a deal breaker for us. Um, and so the person we were working with said, I'll take care of it. It went away. Nobody could explain it. It wasn't legal, actually. <laughs> but that's going to come back. We're going to see that again, so be ready for it. Um, so, what are we going to see going forward? I, unfortunately, am not on health policy this term, uh, but I will still be following it. Um, and um, in fact, they, uh, our leadership put an anti-choice person as chair of health policy, which is very unfortunate. I am, however, chair of or vice chair of um, uh, children fa or family children, families, and seniors which is where a lot of the abortion stuff goes through. So um, that, you know, that's a good place for me to be. <laughs> so, okay, what we're gonna see. Uh, the, uh, do you remember about the, the ban on abortion coverage that you have to opt in and pay extra? A woman would have to pay more essentially for healthcare coverage. That's one of the bills that's coming. Ed, Ed Ribbit, who is head of Right to Life, Ribbit actually it is, I call him Ed Ribbit. Um, he calls, what he does is relentless positive agitation. So we have to be the other, you know, the agitation on the other side. Um, okay, so the, the opt-in coverage is one. Fixing the tie bar disappearance on the course of, uh, uh, or excuse me, uh, criminal charges for course of abortion procedures. Oh, a tie bar is two bills that are linked together they cannot be separated, and when you vote for one, they, you know, they have to oh, go in together. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank, th I forget, people. <laughs> I didn't used to know what that meant either. So, <laughs> so. Um, and then the third is uh, religious refusals uh, on the part of hospitals, uh, insurances, and providers that that can refuse to provide services that they don't morally agree with, like family planning, end of life stuff. Uh, is that pharmacists? Yeah, I, I think, yeah, that would be the one of the providers. Um, so that stuff will probably all go, well, opt-in coverage will go to insurance, the Tiber, I'm not, that criminal charges for course of abortion probably go to health policy. It, it's all decided by the, by the speaker, so he just does what he wants to do. So we're going to have some fights on our hands, and... Um, but so these we're, haven't gone into effect. These no, no, these are just, this is what we're going to see down the pike. Yeah, Mary. Um, one thing I want to comment on is that I'm just really thrilled to hear you say it's pro-conscience. And I think that's a really, really good way for us to describe mm -hmm. it. Because what I have right. learned is that if we say pro-choice, we say we have a right to do this. There's a whole bunch of people here in the world that will say, oh, I have a right. They hear, what they hear is someone saying, I have a right to kill my baby. That's not what you're saying. 
but that's what they're hearing. So I, that has not worked well for us. Right. So I'm really glad to see that draft and pro conscience. I hadn't thought about that. That's really good. Trust women to make their own decisions. And then the other thing I would like to comment on, it seems like the bottom line here is we can write all the letters and call the legislators and tell the cows come home, but it really, it's who you elect. And so I think right. right now we have to start working on, and we've got two great pro-choice women right here in mm -hmm. Ms. Keegan County, but we also have a set of seats that we need to, pro-conscious, sorry, <laughs> pro-conscious uh, uh, representatives here in Ms. Keegan County, and I think we need to work on the senator. Um, there's all sorts of things that we need to do to organize, not ourselves, not just ourselves, but everybody who thinks the way we do, starting right now, because that's the, from what I can see, that's the only way we're going to get this. We're not going to change anybody's mind who's already uh, down here. So anyway, well, that's my take on it. <laughs> the uh, Planned Parenthood, uh, all the pro-choice, uh, or, no, well, that's what we're called. <laughs> Uh, organizations statewide have have come together and and this organization was part of that uh, in Lansing um, uh, and so and it's called one voice and in those meetings we've had two meetings now um, Planned Parenthood is involved and and they have done some research on messaging and messaging is critical particularly on this issue um, it's the words you use and the words that um, that seem to do the best in the public is trust women to decide and that's why you have those words on the billboard that we paid for um, and I have to I owe a hundred bucks I promised I haven't paid yet um, so um, you know, so just keep that in mind use those words trust women to decide uh, and uh, and pro conscious yeah.